Why is calcium scoring not used as a definitive metric on effectiveness of diet and lifestyle in regards to reducing cardiac event risks? Oh, good, we can talk about CAC scores. I'm you're ready. Just, you're, you're ready? You can start? You can, you can start with the background, and I'm going to add yeah. a little nuance at the end. Fair enough. Okay. Right. So coronary calcium scores, it is uh, a kind of, basically kind of like an x-ray that you can get that looks at the blood vessels that feed your heart muscle. And those are the blood vessels that can get kind of narrowed, blocked up, quote unquote, and can contribute to the risk of having heart attacks. And so when there is calcium deposited in those things, in the plaques, that can be visible on some of these kind of x-ray type scans. And the more calcium that we see, that tends to correlate with higher and higher and higher risks of having something like a heart attack. Conversely, having very, very low levels, in particular having a zero calcium score on one of these kind of scans is actually very reassuring. In an individual who has low risk of having a heart attack in general, having a zero score means like you're probably good for at least a decade and we don't need to worry about things. And if you were, you know, you, you probably don't need medications to mitigate your heart disease risk, you're uh, like in pretty damn good shape. For people who are at intermediate or higher risk of having uh, uh, heart disease, so maybe somebody who has diabetes or um, something like that, or may have symptoms concerning for heart disease, a zero score is less helpful, less convincing. Um, there are things called like soft plaque that you can accumulate that won't necessarily light up on these scans. There are some limitations to them. But as far as this question, you know, this question is asking, why is it not used as a metric of effectiveness for diet and lifestyle risk, uh, diet and lifestyle behaviors? And probably the big reason for that is that coronary artery calcium does not regress, meaning that if you say you get one of these scans and you have some detectable coronary artery calcium and then you change your diet and your lifestyle and you get another one, it would not be expected to go down. So it's not necessarily going to be helpful in uh, you determining whether what you're doing is helping. We have other better surrogate metrics for that. Coronary artery calcium can be super useful in helping individuals who have like a vague intermediate risk decide, is it worth me using medication to reduce my risk or not? But as far as monitoring the effectiveness of what you're doing from a lifestyle standpoint, unless your value is zero on an ongoing basis, zero, zero, zero over like, you know, say you get one done every, you know, seven to 10 years or something like that. Um, outside of that context, uh, it's not really useful to monitor the effectiveness of whether what you're doing uh, is helping, and so I would not suggest using it in that fashion. Yeah. Uh, additional nuance here: uh, athletes, particularly very, very active athletes, doing high high volumes of training, so greater than 3,000 met minutes per week. Also, individuals engaged in regular high intensity training tend to have, on average, higher CAC scores uh, than sedentary individuals who are age matched and matched for other, uh, uh, uh certain, uh, demographic, uh, data. And the idea here is that exercise, particularly high volumes of it and very, very intense exercise, one of the adaptive processes that occurs, uh, to that, um, actually increases coronary calcium. Yes. Coronary calcium, just like statins do something related to the, this decrease in inflammation um, that happens secondary to uh, exercises uh, uh, increased released in muscle uh, sort of muscle related hormones like called myokines that ultimately decrease inflammation. Um, full mechanism hasn't been worked out yet, but the, another issue with using CAC scoring, in addition to it not regressing in general, is that sometimes there are peculiar findings, particularly if someone is like super, super active. So let's say someone is an ultra endurance athlete, runs multiple marathons per year, or ultra, otherwise very, very physically active, their CAC score may not actually be indicative of their cardiovascular disease risk at all. So in general, for the gen pop, particularly individuals who are not that active, uh, or at least not very highly active, it can be very useful. If, but it, if it's zero. If it's zero. Otherwise, yeah. it's less useful. <laughs> right, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, particularly in an individual who's very, very active. Yep. Or taking statins, and then you're kind of like, mm, well, what are we doing with this thing? Yeah, the statins thing is interesting, because statins, as we established, have a pretty consistent 20 to 30% reduction in your cardiovascular disease risk, yep. yet they will tend to have a modest increase in calcium on these scans. So how do you make sense of that? So the scans are not perfect. They have utility. Uh, for anybody who's really interested in this, which I imagine is probably nobody, um, <laughs> there is a good paper by the National Lipid Association. They have a statement on the use of coronary artery calcium scans that was published last year in 2020. That would be the, the place to go for that. Link in the description. That's for the internet, it's not for you guys. In case you're, yeah, okay.